Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Remember to cast your vote. Our listener's choice voting continues. You can go to vote.greatdetectives.net. And be sure to vote in both polls to help us narrow down the choices in our standard division to 32 uh, programs, with the top 20 of those from next month's vote set to be replayed after we finish up with Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. Also, today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. You can send in a donation through the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Bob so much for uh, supporting the program. Uh, Bob actually went ahead and sent in a donation to the P.O. Box, which is uh, Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. That's uh, Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. Thank you so much, Bob. You can also become one of our Patreon supporters and support the program on an ongoing monthly basis for as little as $2 per month. Now it's time for today's episode of Rocky Jordan, the original air date, September 11th, 1949. And this one is Adventure with Andrea. Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you today by Del Monte Tomato Products. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Cafe Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, Adventure with Andrea. I remember reading about the earthquake in Ecuador that broke the first week in August. It was a big one. Killed a few thousand people and buried a couple of cities. Yeah, it was big, all right. I even felt the reverberations in Cairo, 8,000 miles away. It started the night I'd left Chris, my bartender, in charge of the tambourine because I had some business across town. When I got back about two and looked in the front door, I saw there was trouble inside. My bartender, Chris, was swinging from the ground at a big guy who was taking it all, then delivering in turn. They moved from the side of the cafe to the center, turning over a table and chair. When the bottles began to break, I figured it was time to put a stop to it. So I moved in, but not before Chris buried his fist in the big guy's stomach and fell face down on a large suitcase. I guess I'm a little late. Oh, hi, Rock. What happened? I don't know. This guy moved in with his suitcase. Started up the stairs to your room. I said it was private, but he wouldn't take no. Who is he? Toby Barker's the name. Toby. Hiya, Rock. Oh, you know him, Rock? Yeah, surely knows me. Port Said, Algiers, Istanbul. Remember, Rock? I remember that when you left Cairo, you took my cash register with you. Yeah? Oh, that, yeah. What are you doing back here? Now, I'll tell you all about it, Rock, but let's go upstairs so I can clean up, huh? Toby wrapped a big paw around the handle of his suitcase, and we went up to my room. He washed up, came back into the bedroom, and flopped on the bed. That's when the conversation started again. <laughs> it's good to see you again, pal. Been a long time, huh? Three years, four years? Something like that. Miss me? Not much. <laughs> yeah. Still sore about me picking up that loose change in your register? Six hundred dollars. It's not the money so much. I just don't like a guy with glue on his fingerprints. <laughs> well, Rock, that's why I'm back. To make amends. Six hundred dollars? Okay, six hundred it is. Uh, I'm a little short right now. Oh, yeah, sure. But, uh... Here's 200 on account. 
I'll give you the other four in a couple of days. Yes, sir, I'm a new man, Rocky. Turned over that leaf everybody talks about. Hey, see that suitcase there? Can't miss it. Mm -hmm. Samples. I'm a salesman. Kitchen utensils, can opener, strainers, potato scraper. Bring modern mechanics to the oppressed housewife in the Middle East. Why, they'll welcome me here with open arms. A new Caesar conquering Egypt with aluminum. You haven't lost any of your wind. <laughs> uh, it's uh, going to be fun bunking with you for a couple of days, Rocky. You staying here? Oh, you wouldn't have it any other way, pal. <laughs> oh, Rock. Yeah. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you, if you don't mention it around town that I'm back. I'd... Is that why you don't want a hotel? Uh, you know how it is, sport. A couple of debts, some people carrying grudges for a long time, and, uh, well, I just as soon it wasn't newsed around with Toby Barker's and Cairo. Uh, you can keep a secret, huh, sport? Well, that's how it began. Part two started the next morning. About nine o'clock, I noticed a kid, 14 or 15, standing across the street, bouncing a ball up against a wall. At 11, he was still there, but his arm was tired, and he was just sitting on the curb. One o'clock, he was bouncing the ball again, but I could see his heart wasn't in it. What he was really doing was a watch job in the tambourine. Three o'clock, the kid was still there watching, and I was getting pretty curious. I moved out to talk to him, but when he saw me coming, he started to run. I took out after him. Hey! Hey, kid! Slow down! I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk to you. He kept on running down the shari of her car with me after him. But on the corner, he ran into a fat lady carrying a basket of groceries. The kid in a bag of Brussels sprouts rolled on the sidewalk. Two seconds later, the fat lady was picking up her Brussels sprouts, and I was picking up the kid. Why does the boy not watch where he is going? Why did not look before he runs into innocent people carrying Brussels sprouts? All right, kid, come on up on your feet. people, the way they raise their children. They raise them to knock over innocent people in the street carrying Brussels sprouts. Uh, he apologizes. Come on, kid, step to the side here. I want to talk to you. Sweat to me. Tell me here. All right, settle down. Déjame ir. No le hice nada. Solamente estaba aquí afuera atendiendo mis propios negocios. Huh? Suéltame, le dije. Now try speaking English. English, English. Pero, señor, no hablo inglés. No lo hablo. Then try speaking Arabic. Por favor, señor, no lo comprendo. Suéltame, por favor. You were watching my tambourine. Why? Por qué, kid? What's going on? No sé de qué hablo. Le dije que estaba atendiendo mis negocios. Suéltame, señor. Suéltame. All the kid could speak or would was Spanish. But when someone cases my place for a full day, I could figure something was up and I wanted to know just what. So I let the kid go, figuring to follow him. He wound me through a couple of streets and ended up at a small hotel called The Dynasty. He disappeared into room 212. A few seconds later, I knocked on the door. Open the door and you'll find out. Oh. Come in, Senor Jordan. We met? No, Senor, but I know of you. He's all right. Come in. Este es el hombre, mamá. Yo sé, Kiko. Haga el favor de dejarnos ahora, huh? Yes. My brother, Kiko. He speaks nothing but Spanish. So I see. He has left us alone so we may talk. You know, I'm not sure whether he led me here purposely or I made it myself. It was not his intention to bring you here, but now that you are here, Senor Jordan... It is only right that I answer your questions. Something's going on, lady. Your brother's been staked out of my tambourine all day. It makes my customers nervous. We have no intention to make your customers nervous. We have no intention either to cause you concern, but in truth, something is going on. Who are you, anyway? My name is Andrea Dios. I'm new to your city. I have come with purpose. From where? South America. The country of Ecuador, the city of Ambato. Ecuador? There's been a lot about Ecuador in the newspapers, the uh, earthquake. Yes. I left shortly after that. Well, you've come a long way. But what's my tambourine got to do with it? Only that under its roof resides a strange man. What? Your guest, Toby Barker. Oh. I ask you, Senor Jordan, I ask you to send that man away. Why? He will bring you trouble. What kind of trouble? What does that matter? Trouble of a kind you will not like. I ask you, please, Senor, send him away. Send him out of your building. You, uh, you always carry a gun? What? That bulge in your purse isn't a bottle of cologne. I ask you, Senor Jordan, once again, send that man out from under your roof. Be wise and do as I say. There is something between the two of us that can wait no longer. Something between the two of us that soon must explode. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, I had the feeling it was a simmering pot. Ingredients? One Toby Barker and a dame from Ecuador. It looked like I was going to be the one to get hit with a flying lid. I went back to the tambourine and spent a couple of hours getting ready for the supper crowd. Chris was racking up a few bottles behind the bar. My cook was scratching around the kitchen with a mix master. And I went into my office. Toby Barker was there looking out the window. Oh, hi, Rock. I didn't hear you come in. Looking for someone? Uh, yeah, Rocky. Yeah. A friend of mine's coming to see me here. I didn't think he'd mind. Uh, he's going to sign up for a large consignment of my kitchen utensils. Then I hit the road. This friend of yours, a uh, woman? A uh, woman? From Ecuador, named Andrea Rios. Andrea Rios? What'd you find out about her? Things get out. Yeah? Got a cigarette? Yeah. Is she the friend you're waiting for? No. What have you got to say about her? Oh, nothing, Rock. Just some dame, you know how it is. Met her in Ecuador, in a little whirl. A little hard to shake, that's all. And you know how it is with women's sports. I know if they're chasing a man, they don't bring along their little brother. Oh? He's here too, huh? That's right. And she's got another little companion that spits lead. Yeah. She's the impetuous type. What is it, Toby? I told you, Rock. Just a little boy meets girl stuff. Nothing important. You're lying. No, Rock. No, really. Hey, look. look now, just forget about it, huh? I'll be out of your place in the morning. Listen, Toby. I'm not in the market for trouble. I run a restaurant here. They got a pretty good rep, and I don't want it messed up. Now, if you've got a thing on with that girl, take it someplace else. But, pal, if you don't... Come in. The bartender says that I would... Oh, Mr. Barker. Yes, uh, come on in, Hashim. I've been waiting for you. I am most sorry, Mr. Barker. The traffic kept me. Hashim Bay, Mr. Jordan. Oh, most delighted, Jordan Bay. I have heard of you. Most of Cairo has. How do you do? Mr. Barker, I have little time. My client leaves the city soon. He's most anxious we consummate our dealings promptly. Oh, sure, Hashim. Uh, Rock, uh, you mind uh, stepping outside? Huh? You want me to leave my own office? <laughs> you don't mind, do you, Rock? For a pal? No, all right. I'll make it fast. I stepped out of my own office and Toby tripped the lock behind me. It was pretty clear that Toby was using my place for a rendezvous with Hashim, and I wanted to know what it was all about. I pressed my ear up against the door, but what I heard was something I didn't expect. I waited a moment until it sounded safe, then unlocked the door and moved inside. Both Toby and Hashim were hugging the floor, still very much alive. The bullets had come from outside. I moved to the shattered window and looked out. Scampering down the street was a long-legged dame with a flock of black hair. She was stuffing something back into her purse, and it figured to be the gun... And when she went by a lamppost, I saw who she was. Andrea Rios, late of Ambato, Ecuador. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. If we should just happen to sneak over to the Joneses for a minute, I bet we'd find Mrs. Jones and her friend Betty talking in the kitchen. Honestly, Betty, I've never seen anything like it. Why, the way Ken polished up his plate was a caution. Oh, that's wonderful. And you can surely thank your lucky stars for the magic combination, so to speak. <laughs> well, I'll agree with you on the magic part. The magic of Del Monte ketchup. I've never tasted such marvelous flavor. Really, Mary, you should try that more often. Why, Ken... <laughs> that must have been quite a meal Mrs. Jones fixed. And ladies... Chances are you'll find the family asking for more and bigger helpings, too, when you serve Del Monte catsup. That tangy, rich tomato flavor really perks up low-cost foods, gives them a zestful flavor that satisfies those hearty appetites. Yes, Del Monte catsup has a distinctive flavor all its own, a flavor you'll like. So next time you make up the shopping list, include Del Monte catsup. It won't be long before you'll join Mrs. Jones in saying... Del Monte catsup is wonderful. I've never tasted such marvelous flavor. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, Adventure with Andrea. Well, 
I watched Andre around a corner. When I turned back from the window, Hashim Bey had already picked himself up and was scampering out of my place. And Toby Barker was dusting off his suit, quite relieved that the bullets landed in my wall. I decided I wanted more words with a South American bombshell who was turning my office into a skeet shoot. I caught up with her back at her hotel room, and I don't think I was too gentle as I snatched her purse away from her and opened it. What are you doing? I'm a gun collector, lady, and I want yours. I've got it. Uh Uh-huh. Three bullets fired, and they're all on my wall. I missed. I'm a little touchy about guns going off in my place. I told you. I told you, I told you, I told you. Get that man out from under your roof. Maybe I don't want her. Maybe he's a friend of mine. I don't like being told what to do with my friends. What are you screaming about? I missed. Listen, Miss Ecuador, maybe you don't understand. We got laws in Cairo. Assault with a deadly weapon, intent to kill. And we got jails, too. And they got plenty of room. Do not just stand there. Call the police. Maybe I will. Call them, call them, call them. What do I care? All right. Go ahead. What are you waiting for? Get me Captain Sam Sabaya, Cairo police. Call Call them, call them. What does it matter now? I miss. I talked to Sam, and he said he'd be right down. Then I hung up and turned back to look at Andrea. She had slumped down on the couch and was beginning to cry. Ah, some dames can turn it on like a water faucet and use it to get things their own way. But this was different. This was real. At least it looked like it. It wasn't a loud cry. It was soft, but tight, like it was bound up in ropes. And it was a deep cry. It made a fellow wonder. After a while, she came out of it. Bring up, Georgia. Yeah. What are the chains, huh? You won't be fond of it. I did not suppose I would. Do you uh, have anything you want to tell me? As much, I could say. I'm a good listener. But to what avail, Senor Jordan? I have tried to kill a man. I have followed him halfway around the world with one purpose. There's a reason. Reason. But this reason for one person is not always for another. Try me. I'm living in Amato, in Ecuador. My father is a most revered and wonderful man. He's the proprietor of a fine art shop containing beautiful and expensive relics of early Ecuadorian culture. Then I bring to live with us a man whom I love and have married. He is a man whom my father considers a spoiler he does not approve. But he bends to the wish of his daughter whom he loves very much. The new husband is dead. As time goes, I hear that my husband is disreputable. I refuse to believe then the moment comes when I can no longer shut my eyes to what is about me. It comes when the earthquake comes to Ecuador. The buildings of Mavato are shattered. The people are buried in the rubble. The children scream for their mothers and misery is all over. It is then, as the buildings quiver and the stones fall, that in front of my eyes, unaware I am there, my husband kills my father with a blow on the head. Still... And then disappears. The law can do nothing. First it is troubled by the misery of the earthquake. Then it sees no proof. As far as it is concerned, my father was killed by falling rubble. But the daughter knows differently. The daughter saw. And yet she has no proof. Now the burden of justice lies with her. Hmm, That's a lot of story. How do I know it's true? You do not. Well, what's your plan now, Andrea? It depends most strongly upon the words you uttered to Captain Sabine. Yeah. But in fairness, I must say to you, though justice has failed once, it may still be attempted again. <laughs> yes? Captain Sam Sabine, the Cairo police. Oh, come in, Sam. You call me Jordan? Yeah. I came as promptly as I could. Well, what do you wish of me? Uh, Sam. Yes, I'm waiting, Jordan. Andrea, will you do one thing for me? Don't do anything for a couple of hours. Give me a chance to think a little bit. I've waited so long. I can wait a little longer. Jordan, would you come? Come on, Sam. uh, Outside. I'll see you soon, Andrea. 
George, and I'm a most busy man. I, I receive an urgent telephone call from you requesting me to arrive as promptly as possible at room 212 of the Dynasty Hotel. Yeah, I know, sir. This I do. When I arrive, I find you and a beautiful woman alone in a room... The atmosphere most dense. I know, Sam. I see that you are disturbed, that the lady has been crying, that a gun lies on the bed. And when I ask of you the trouble, you tell me nothing. I'm sorry, Sam. Later, I'll tell you all. Jordan. Huh? Beware that you are not carrying too much upon your shoulders. Beware that you are not making decisions which are beyond your province. Yes, Sam. I'll watch it. I left Sam and went back to the tambourine, trying to figure all the while if what Andrea had told me was true. I went up to my room. Toby wasn't there, but Chris was. Oh, hi, Rock. Just picking up a few of Toby's empty bottles. What's the matter? You look like you've been through an egg beater. Where's Toby? He left a few minutes ago. He had a phone call. Said he'd be back soon. Uh huh. What are you looking for? Your suitcase. Did he take it with him? No, it's over there behind the couch. Uh, I'll take a look inside. He said there's nothing in it but his samples. Kitchen equipment. Well, let's find out, huh? Now, that's kitchen stuff, Rocky. Orange squeezer, knives. Hmm. Let's look at the bottom layer. What is it, Rocky? Looks sort of odd, doesn't it? It's filigree. Gold, silver, or platinum. They're Ecuadorian ornaments of some sort and pretty expensive. I don't get it, Rock. What's it mean? It means part of her story's true, anyway. Whose story? I'll tell you about it later, Chris. Look, uh, Toby will be back pretty soon to sell this stuff to Hashim. You'll have to do something for me. I want to see a lady from Ecuador. I told Chris what I wanted him to do, then went back to the dynasty to find Andrea. The desk clerk said she'd gone across the street to get a sandwich. I found her munching on some devil egg and sipping black coffee. You came back sooner than I expected. I got an answer sooner than I expected. What do you mean? I went through Toby Barker's suitcase. Oh. Gold and platinum filigree, eh? My father's. That's right. Worth quite a bit of money. Fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars, depending on the buyer. Even now, Toby is trying to close the deal with an Egyptian named Hashim. And then he will leave the contract. I have not much time. Andrea. Yes? He'll tip his hand. Sooner or later, he'll tip his hand. Will he? I'm trying to tell you to lay away your gun. I know what. It's not worth it, Andrea. If he did what you said he did, he's still not worth your killing. You do not have to go on. My mind is made up. It has worked within me for so long that there is nothing for me to do but to kill him. Andrea. He is an evil man the law cannot touch. He killed my father. And that death is laid at my feet. Rocky, I have no other course but to do what I have planned. <laughs> She sprung up out of the chair, pulled away from me, and moved out of the place fast. In a minute, she was lost in the crowd on the boulevard. And I found myself wanting to keep her from killing more than anything else. But it takes two to make a killing. The one with the intent and the victim. If one couldn't be stopped, maybe the pigeon could be removed. I figured I could beat her back to the tambourine, so I called a cab, told him to step on it. A little while later, he dropped me off just in time to see Hashim Bey scurry out of my place with Barker's sample case in his hand. He was moving toward a black sedan on the corner. I suppose, to his waiting client. But I was interested in Toby Barker. I found him in the kitchen, a roll of bills in his hand. Oh, hi, you Rock. <laughs> We're just going to leave this for you. The rest of the 600 I owe you. Old Hashim and I closed the deal. I turned over my uh, kitchen utensils to him, and he turned over his cash to me. You better start moving, Toby. Huh? I said you better start moving. I'm going. <laughs> What's the big hurry? Did Hashim open the suitcase before he took it? No, there wasn't much time. He had someone wait. What? You'd better move. More reasons than one, pal. You're turning into a rabbit in a greyhound race. <laughs> what are you talking about? Andrea's on her way over here, and she's got a new clip for a gun. Oh? <laughs> Thanks, Rock. Thanks, pal, for warning me. I'm not thinking about you. Well, then... I don't I... want her to kill you, that's why. I don't think you're worth it. You don't want her to... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, there's one for you. <laughs> Oh, that's rich, pal. The rock going soft from my wife. Now back door, Toby. Use it. <laughs> sure, sure, Rock. I'm going. Oh, hey, wait. What about your money? Forget it. I don't like the way you got it. Your debt's canceled. <laughs> Suit yourself. 
Go on now, make it fast. There's a plane for Athens in 30 minutes. So long, soft touch. I'll use your 400 to have the shot. At the shot, Toby grabbed his stomach, and that's when the rest of them came. He toppled over in his face, and by the time he hit the ground, he was dead. I looked up the alley to see where the shots had come from. All I saw was a figure standing there with a gun in her hand. Andreo Rios. And it looked just like it was mission accomplished. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. When you get right down to it, folks... The best cooking authorities are you homemakers. You ladies who, day in and day out, have to turn out appetizing meals and yet stay within the budget. That's quite a problem, as you know. Here's how one experienced homemaker, Mrs. J.H. Tandro of Oakland, California, solves the problem. She's a Del Monte enthusiast, been cooking for 24 years, and she said... I've solved the problem of meals with appetite appeal the easy way, with Del Monte tomato sauce. I've been a cooking fan for a long time, and Del Monte has always been a staple on my pantry shelf. You see, I make a great many stews, meat pies, and fish dishes, and I just can't imagine them without that good, rich tomato flavor. And Del Monte tomato sauce is so easy to cook with. Anybody can use it. Thank you, Mrs. Tandro. Yes, Del Monte tomato sauce is so easy to use. Just pour it over and cook it in. Then sit back and enjoy a real flavor treat. For tomato flavor at its best, buy the original tomato sauce by Del Monte. Back now to Rocky Jordan. Well, that was the picture. Toby Parker cut down by a flood of bullets and standing up the alley from him, Andrea Rios, a gun in her hand. It had been a long haul for her, but it looked like she'd finally done it. As I saw her leaning against a building, beginning to sob, I felt sick. I hadn't been able to get the pigeon away in time. Well, I started up toward her. As I got closer, I could hear her sobs. They cut into me like knives, and I began to feel sorry for everybody who got into something they had no way out of. Andrea. I, I heard him groan. I saw him grab his stomach. Come on now, get hold of yourself. He fell forward on his face. Andrea. Did I do it, Rocky? Did I finally do it? Give me the gun. And now that it is done, am I more happy? Andrea, Andrea, listen to me. This gun hasn't been fired. All the bullets are still in the clip. You didn't kill him, Andrea. Indeed, she did not, your... Sam! Since I answered your telephone request at the Dynasty Hotel, I've been keeping a close watch on you. Oh, I don't get it. You didn't cut Toby down. I've been outside the tambourine. A moment ago, Miss Rios came and waited by that lamppost. Then I saw this man, Toby Barker... Emerged by your back door. I saw Miss Rios reach into her purse for a gun. I moved to stop her, but before I could, shots came from another direction. Mr. Barker was killed by a man named Hashim Bey. Hashim Bey? Sergeant Greco and I have apprehended him. Even now, he is in the police car. He has said that he killed Barker because Barker had double-crossed him. Oh, uh, Jordan, of this suitcase, do you recognize it? Sure, that's Toby Barker's sample case. It... It originally had the gold and platinum filigree in it. Originally, yes. That is what Hashim paid for, but what he got was... Well, observe. I shall open the suitcase. You see? The original contents, the filigree, had been removed. And it had been replaced truly with kitchen utensils. And all of them are stamped with the mark of the cafe tambourine. Jordan, would you please explain to me when you pull the switch... Well, Chris had done what I had asked him to do Remove the filigree and replace it with plain old utensils for my kitchen I was trying to save the filigree for Andrea Rios Because I knew Toby was getting ready to peddle it right away I had no idea the switch would make Hashim throw bullets at Toby But it did, and well, that was that I turned the filigree over to Sabaya And after the inquiry, it would go back to Andrea Rios that's about all, except that Andrea got her justice without putting her own foot in it. Later, Andrea and her brother Kiko went back to Ecuador. Well, who knows? Maybe someday I'll take a trip over there myself. Oh, 
for the finest in tomato flavor. Enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Larry Roman and Gomer Cool, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arundt. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Nile Runs High. If you haven't tried Del Monte pickles, you don't know how really good a pickle can be. Sweet pickles, sour pickles, dill pickles, every kind you like, and every one crisp and full of flavor. Del Monte pickles, more good products from the brand that always puts flavor first. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, a tricky title for me, uh, because when I first read the title on the show file, I thought of my wife's name, uh, Andrea, but it's not Andrea. In this case, it's Andrea. And we do get those little uh, variations in pronunciation that people will actually call Andrea by. But overall, I enjoyed the episode. I think this uh, episode really gave Rocky a chance to show his nobility of character. And I like the ending to this one as well. It did have a few surprises up its sleeve. I don't think it was a surprise where the show ended, but how it got there I thought was a, a pretty clever work. I also noted the the comment about most people in Cairo knowing who Rocky is, and that led me to think that that might also be an explanation for why he ended up leaving uh, Istanbul, is that he did sort of the same stuff and got a reputation and a lot of trouble coming to him, and so he had to clear out. Now on to listener comments and feedback, and we start with one from uh, Marky, uh, who has been listening to the show for years, uh, got on the app and started out with the early episodes and has been making his way up for, I think, a good couple, three years now. Uh, and he writes in, uh, listening to episode 2705, Rocky Jordan, this show is growing on me. And the relationship between Rocky and Sam Sabaya is one of the best detective and cop relationships. A good, smart cop that gives Rocky just a r enough room to help out, but not enough to leave him hanging. Well, thanks so much, Marky. Appreciate your comment. And congratulations on being so close to being caught up. We turn to Facebook and a question from Amy who writes, I voted but then realized that I didn't see or perhaps remember the name of the series with Dan Duryea. Perhaps there weren't enough episodes uh, regarding the listener's choice poll. Oh, well, in answer to the question, Amy, uh, the listener's choice poll we're having this month is just to get the uh, field narrowed down. It's a preliminary round for what we're calling the standard division. Now, the standard division is every series where we have 11 or more episodes. And with the voting next month, the top 20 of those series will be uh, played as uh, listener's choice. However, we're also going to have a short division with shows where there are between three to ten episodes in circulation. 
Uh, many of those shows have had a lot of people who enjoyed them, but they were only on the uh, podcast for a short time. I don't, I don't think they could or should compete with the uh, standard division programs. And in this particular case, we don't really need to winnow down the uh, field. We already have a little less than 30 programs in the short division. So next month we'll have the standard division poll, the short division poll, with the top five in the short division uh, also being listener's choice uh, programs, and uh, you'll be able to vote in each uh, division once. So thanks so much for the question, Amy. We also have a Facebook recommendation from Frank, who writes, uh, really enjoy the programs, and the host adds some good insight on each one. Thanks so much, Frank. And finally, we have an app review on the Apple App Store from Noble Oni, who writes, The heyday of radio detective drama has been brought back to life by Adam Graham in the order the shows were originally broadcast. Adam does his homework for every single episode, and historical nuggets he provides add additional context to the shows. I've always been a fan of radio drama, and with this podcast, I've abandoned all other forms of listening entertainment while driving in the car or going to sleep. This is the best podcast I've come across, and the app is superb. Anyone who enjoys crime drama will be thrilled with this app and its podcast. Keep up the good work, Adam. You have hundreds of thousands of fans worldwide. Well, thanks so much. All right, that will do it for now. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie, and then we'll be back again next Wednesday with another episode of Rocky Jordan. Remember, be sure and cast your vote in the preliminary round of the Listener's Choice Voting. Go to vote.greatdetectives.net. You can follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.